I'm stoked to, you guys get a, ch get a chance to hear from my awesome wife. She uh, is no joke, one of the best leaders I know. Um, she's raising up a world changer kid. And that's what we agreed to when we, when we had kid, uh, our kid is like, we're not raising Joe bag of donuts. You know, we are raising, we are raising a world changer and that doesn't happen by accident. And uh, that's one of the reasons we chose the homeschool is because, you know, bottom line is, um, you know, you know, all our kids are, are getting brainwashed um, and not, I'm not trying to bust anyone's, you know, whatever your option is for your kids is totally cool. Uh, but for us, we just want to do the brainwashing. Anyway, my wife's amazing. That's why we chose the homeschools because we wanted to do the brainwashing. Also, we're entrepreneurs. We've been entrepreneurs for two decades now, and we wanted to teach our kid entrepreneurship. And we knew that there was no public, private, ninja school that was available that was going to teach her entrepreneurship like we knew how to rock entrepreneurship. So uh, my background, again, you guys can see here, I'm a West Point guy. A lot of you guys know me. I was the infantry officer, Navy 2nd Airborne Division. Uh, I've been part of almost 10 different startups. So I got a business bug early and I, I just love business and um, I just love it. So, and most of my business ventures have failed. And uh, as an entrepreneur, one of our primary professors is, uh, you know, our little girl knows who is, is, is professor failure, right? That's, that's one of our primary instructors is, is failure. So for us, in fact, in our house, this, little free free tacos here is um is we celebrate failure in our house we celebrate it uh when i do cuddle ops with my kid every night is i ask her hey lena how did you fail today and if she has a tough time thinking of something we're about to go fail at something because you're not we're not going to go through each day without failing at something right because entrepreneur it in the then again not to try and get anybody's kool-aid here but you know in in, in uh in our american education system we're taught that failing is bad, right? And trust me, I got lots of fantastics at West Point, okay? So, so I have the t-shirt uh, in that department. But for, for me as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, like that's how you learn. So I wanted to, to give my kid a whole different grid about failure. I wanted her to not, to, you know, as an employee, you get chewed out to, when you fail, right? In our house, you get celebrated. That's, that's part of the deal. Um, so, uh, so we've, I've had uh, a couple medical imaging centers, um, uh, fitness center, government contracting uh, business with some special operations guys, executive coaching, and then uh, a 360 degree influencer mentor model. So we're big. That's a, another reason why we developed this is because we want to help impact people in every area of their life, not just uh, uh, be as successful in your career, but you have a terrible home life. Right, be have a great home life, but you're terrible at your career. We want we want to impact people in every area of your life, not just one area. Uh, I'm also a dirty white belt in BJJ uh, <laughs> as well, and I've got two a uh, couple of the high speed jujitsu guys that throw me around the mats here uh, on a on a fairly regular basis. My superpowers are people. I love people. That's my jam. Like, uh, I you know don't do do drugs, but do people. Like that's my my thing is is people. My awesome wife has a background as a, as a missionary kid. She was an MK missionary kid uh, with New Tribes Bible Institute. And uh, her background is retail management. And again, uh, uh, we homeschool with classical conversations. And she's been an awesome entrepreneur, a leader, a teacher, a super mom. Uh, again, for, uh, for, we've been married for over 20 years. Yeah. And then we've been together for over half our life. What's up? How many of you guys can say that? You've been with your spouse. For over half your life, right? So that's a small club right there. That's right. What's up? That's right. Little air knuckles. Boom. Okay. Uh, and, and my awesome wife's superpowers are making stuff happen. She, like, no joke. Like, she, she is a machine when it comes to tasks. Like, she is amazing. Um, Elena is 10. She loves God. Her furball golden doodle dog, Teddy. Uh, who has an uncanny ability to not listen to anything uh, or anyone. <laughs> so uh, she also loves her best friend, Faith. 
Uh, we're, so Jay and Rowena, again, raise your hands. So Jay and Rowena, it's their daughter, Jay and Rowena, their little girl, Faith, and, uh, uh, which is also her business partner. Uh, they've done one business together. Uh, Lena's actually uh, had a couple of different businesses, but one little they've done one little business together already. A little little partnership, a little JV, a little joint venture venture right there. Um, and then uh, also Lena does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we do uh, Jiu Jitsu at Team Rock, and so she's been doing it now for a year and a half. Um, and uh, she's she loves it. She totally digs it like a shovel. And then our kid's superpower, I would say, is delightful. She's just a just an awesome. And, and I, yes, I'm biased, but like uh, even because we would. But here's the here's why I say she's delightful is because we have been intentional at dialing her in, right? So so I'm not going to get we're that we'll save that for another discussion. But I, I um I am a big believer that, and I know there's exceptions, but just bear with me. If the kid is psycho, it's because the parents have not trained the kid. Right. Some people say, well, you just don't understand it's a boy or it's no, no, no. You just haven't been intentional about training your kid. Right. So it's just like it's just like the military and it's just like in the business world. If you have employees, if you have soldiers that are acting cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, a lot of times it's a reflection of the leader. Right now, again, there are exceptions, but, um, you know, our, our, our kid is, is dialed in because we've been training her not because she just popped out of the womb like dialed in. Right. It's because we've been very intentional at parenting and stuff. So that being said, I'm going to have an awesome wife uh, share some skinny with you guys. And then I'm going to cover a couple of things. And then we'll, again, take that uh, about 10 minute break and then we'll reconvene. So uh, give my awesome wife a big hand. All right, we're switching seats so you guys online can see me. So hello, I just want to greet all the folks who are plugging in via satellite. Great to have you guys here. And thanks to the speakers who've already gone, you guys. Um, just rocked it. It was excellent. So I am coming to you today. Let me just share a little bit about my perspective and kind of what life has been like and what we have created, um, the life that we've created for ourselves, because it does inform my perspective and where I'm coming from. So um, like Noble said, we're entrepreneurs. I have been a full-time entrepreneur for 16 years, um, Noble also for 13 years. And so this has been our lifestyle. Like we truly we have been very intentional about building a business around our family and building our family around our business. If you were to watch us on any given day, you wouldn't know, are they working or are they playing? Are they hanging with their family? Or are they rocking business? You probably wouldn't know um, because for us, it's very much cohesive. Now we also homeschool. So that means we are in, because we work from home and we homeschool, like all of us are he together a lot, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's not like we can ship Elena off to school for eight hours a day and knock stuff out. We, it, our life is not compartmentalized. So obviously that presents some opportunities and some things that we have had to figure out and some things that we have had to implement. So, you know, leadership equals influence. John Maxwell, he always says that. Leadership is influence. It's not just, I'm a task person at heart, and so a lot of times I might default to just leadership means just get it done. I'm going to tell you this, and you just go do it. I don't want to hear about it. Just get it done, right? Well, that's not influence. That's checking things off a list, and I've had to learn primarily from my husband that True leadership, true influence looks very different. And you have to come at it with a different mindset in order to influence people. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what we're doing? It's either we're checking off tasks, which I could do all day long, or we're influencing people. And I have to know the difference. And I have to know when I need to do one and when I need to do the other. And so here I've got three things. I think all of us have like rocked three points, okay? <laughs> I'm also a preacher kid, so like there's something to it. That's what preachers do, so. Okay, so number one, you have to lead yourself first. You have to be able to lead you first. You have to know what works for you. You have to be growing you. Nothing changes until you change something you do on a daily basis. So when you look at your life, okay, what are the things that need to change for me? What are the areas that I need to influence myself with, and then you look at what you're doing daily. What needs to change on a daily basis? As a leader, if you are not growing yourself, you're going backwards. We owe it to the people that we are leading to constantly be growing ourselves, to be making ourselves better, to be um, reaching our full potential, 
so to speak, developing, as Noble calls it, developing our superpowers so that we can operate to our highest potential because that's when other people are gonna get the best from us too. So what is your game plan for growth? What's your accountability for that? Where, where are you getting that information from? Who are you connected to, right? Who, what mentor do you have? There, I, we don't believe that there's any such thing as a self-made person. Um, uh, here's another quote that I've heard. He who counsels himself has a fool as a mentor. Right, we all need other people. We need to be finding somebody who are gonna help, finding somebody who is gonna help us go to that next level. So that's number one. Number two is to be intentional. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish? Do you know where you're trying to end up? Where, what is the end state? And I'm gonna focus this specifically on family. How many of you here have children? Let me see, okay, so it's a good number. Or raise your hand if you don't have children, but you maybe want to someday also. Okay, so that's gonna be the majority of people. Here's a few things. Can I just tell you one, I have um, incredible parents. One of the things that I learned from my dad, something that they did as we were, as we were growing up, all of us kids when we were at home, is every year, he and my mom, they would go away for the weekend and they would have a state of the union, or state of the, excuse me, not state of the union, state of the family planning session where they would talk about, okay, where is our family at? Where is each child at? What do they need? What do we need to help this child? What areas does this child need to grow in? And what can we do to do that? Every year, they went away. They got away from us, right? So that they could focus, but they were intentional about it. So a couple of things that we have learned is, here's a couple of questions, just kind of for self-reflection. Do you know what is the most important thing you are trying to accomplish with your family for the phase of life that you're in? Do you know what is the most important thing that you're trying to accomplish with your family with the phase of life that you're in? Because that changes. When you're in a phase of life and you've got babies at home, that is one thing. Right? And then when you've got school age children, that's another thing. You go into the preteen years and the teen years, it changes. And if you're not staying on top of that, all of a sudden, any other parents ever experienced this? All of a sudden, your kids changed. And you're like, what's going on? Well, it didn't happen all of a sudden. There's a very predictable growth. Uh, pattern that families are going to go through and children go through, but if you're not aware of that and you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, it tends to just not happen or you just tend to get what happens um, by accident. So are you analyzing that? Are you changing it as your family changes? Do you, do you know where your child is at based on who your child is, right? Because you cannot treat every child the same. We all want to say that, but that does not work. They, do you know what your child needs? Do you know what makes them thrive? What makes them tick? Do you know what makes them frustrated and angry and helps them to work through that? And one of the things that I have learned is you have to be there at important moments. So what are those important moments in the day for your child, right? And so that you can be intentional about capitalizing on them. For us, it's not just enough to have a good kid. Is our kid good? Yeah, we think she's great. Is she perfect? Oh no, <laughs> definitely not. It's not enough to have a smart kid. Is that the goal? Is that really the goal? I wanna have a good kid. I wanna have a smart kid. Those things are nice, they're fine, but how about having a kind kid? How about developing character? How about developing a mindset in this child that's gonna actually help them succeed in life? Because you all know that after a certain point, just being the smart kid in class doesn't matter anymore, right? That's great while you're in school, but the day you graduate, really nobody cares. It's the person that you are that you take into the world. It's the person you are that is what influences other people. And so are we more concerned about developing their grades or developing their character? Two very different things. Now you can use grades to help develop character, but again, what are you trying to accomplish? That's what it comes down to is what are you trying to accomplish? Have you defined what kind of a life you want as a family? Have you defined what kind of family you want to have? Have you defined the impact you want your family to make in the world? 
And here's the thing, there's zero shame if you haven't done this, if you've never heard of this before, we hadn't either. We hadn't either until we got around a group of people who had priorities like this and we thought, oh my goodness, this is awesome. It gave us some really good stuff to go back and have great conversations about. Because we knew that you'll never hit a target that you can't see. If you don't know where you're going, there's no path to get there, right? You always have to know what the end point is. And understand this, every yes, carries a multitude of no's. Every yes carries a multitude of no's. And you've heard it from some of the other speakers here today. Um, you can do anything you want in life, but you can't do everything. At least not at the same time, right? There's gonna come a time when, you when you're faced with, okay, I have this option or this option. If you say yes, what are the things that automatically by saying yes, you're saying no to? And it's called counting the cost, right? It's wise to do. You always count the cost. There's nothing wrong with it, but you need to know that or else you get yourself into the cycle of overwhelm um, and too much. All right, last thing here, my number three, is leading your family. Because we talk about leadership and it's, um, you've heard some incredible stuff and um, I want the area, the niche that I wanted to focus on here is leading your family. Um, I read this one time, peer pressure is only as strong as the family identity is weak. Peer pressure is only as strong as the family identity is weak. Okay, so what's family identity? Right? What does that even mean? What does that look like? This is, when we heard that, we thought, okay, I got it, we can wrap our brain around this. So what does it look like to build and to create family identity? Well, one of the things that we did when Elena was very, very young, we probably started when she was two or three, honestly, uh, before she was even really able to speak in, in full sentences, is we created a, the Gibbons family is. It's an identity statement. And it is a list of things that we have chosen that we want the Gibbons family to stand for and to represent. And she memorized it. And she says it on a daily basis. We say it as a family. It's something because we want her to know who she is and who she and where she comes from. Now, but is that just enough? That's a lot. That is a lot. That's huge. But is it enough? No, we have to back that up. We have to back that up with time and intention. And so one of the things that we have done, even with a busy entrepreneur life, lifestyle, is we have set aside a family night once a week. People who are our friends, they know Monday night is family night. So we're, for the most part, we're not available because we are gonna spend time as a family. She always knows, regardless of how busy our week is, regardless of what's going on, that family night, she gets us 100%. Right, and knowing that going into the teen years, that we're available for conversation, that we're available for hangout, that we're available to fill that love tank back up because life is busy, um, makes a huge difference. So, I would just encourage you what family identity do you want to create, and how do you feel like you can go about doing that? Who can you ask? What books can you read that are going to help you, um, you know, help you design that? And I just am really appreciative because this has been an area that Noble has led our family very, very well in. Um, because at the end of the day, like he said, we knew that we wanted our greatest accomplishment to be our family first. We set our priorities very early in our marriage that it was going to be God, family, and then everything else, right? God, family, and everything else. And so we made decisions around that. And at times, did it seem hard? Sure, of course. It always seems hard when you're having to say yes or no to things, right? Like I talked about. But, if, but ask us if we regret it. Not one single bit, right? Not one single bit. And so we worked to create a life that would support the outcome that we wanted. Um, anyway, so I appreciate you, babe. You rock. I think it's amazing what he has done, the vision that Noble had with these 360-degree leadership events. Um, this man is an influencer of influencer. It's one of his mission statements. It's one of his purposes of life. And so that's why we're here. That's why you are here is because his whole goal is how can he influence influencers? How can he make an impact that's going to go beyond him, that's going to go beyond his life? Um, this is just one of the ways that he does it. So we're happy that you guys are here. We're happy that you're plugging in. But mostly we'll be happy if you go and implement, um, if you take what these speakers have given you and you apply it to you. So with that, turn it back over to my amazing man. Here's Noble.